This is video podcast 28 from learningradiology.com, aspirated and ingested foreign bodies. Hello, I'm William Herring from Albert Einstein Medical Center in Philadelphia. Today we're going to talk about ingested foreign bodies, chicken and fish bones, the ingestion of caustic materials, meat, coins, button batteries, and magnets. We're also going to talk about aspiration of oral or gastric contents, and foreign bodies such as teeth. And for a change of pace, on the blue slides, there'll be some trivia. Ingested foreign bodies. About 80% of all foreign bodies are ingested by children between the ages of six months and three years. True foreign bodies include things like marbles and toy trucks. Food-related foreign bodies are more often ingested by adults. Most objects will pass through the gastrointestinal tract once they get through the esophagus. Less than 1% of ingested foreign bodies will require surgery for removal, and only about 20% require endoscopy for removal. The points at which foreign bodies become impacted in the esophagus most often will be just below the cricopharyngeus muscle at about 70% of cases, at the level of the aortic arch in about 20% of cases, and then just above the esophagogastric junction in another 10% of cases. The points at which foreign bodies become impacted in the GI tract as a whole, once they pass the EG junction, then the other two points of possible impaction are the pylorus and the ileocecal valve. Chicken and fish bones. Chicken bones are more opaque than fish bones because fish bones contain less calcium and may be non-opaque. The first procedure which is ordered is a plain film, a lateral neck soft tissue technique to look for a radio-opaque bone. Then, if there's a very high index of suspicion, either a contrast swallow using water-soluble contrast or barium, or if there's an extremely high index of suspicion given the x-ray dose that's involved, CT scan of the neck. This is an example of an ingested and impacted chicken bone in the esophagus. The red arrow is pointing to a linear radio density, which represents the chicken bone. Remember that the esophagus lies posterior to the trachea, here with a capital T on it, below the level of the epiglottis. Don't confuse the calcified or calcifying laryngeal cartilages, which lie in the course of the trachea, with a foreign body in the esophagus. Ingestion of caustic materials usually means ingestion of lye. It is the most common agent that causes damage to the GI tract. It contains liquid sodium hydroxide, and it's usually found in drain cleaners. These are very alkaline. These are extremely potent as well. About a cc of lye, even in the cap of a container that had lye in it, can produce a full thickness necrosis of the esophagus in less than 30 minutes. These tend to produce long, smooth strictures. About 20% also have narrowing of the antrum. Since the lye is extremely alkaline, it does tend to be neutralized by the gastric acid, but some damage can occur in the stomach. And there is a significantly increased risk of carcinoma of the esophagus 20 to 30 years after the lye ingestion. This is what a stricture of the esophagus from lye ingestion looks like. It is a long, smooth stricture, shown here by the red arrows. Food-related foreign bodies can include hot dogs, inadequately chewed meat, fruit pits, and the like. In adults, it's important to rule out the presence of an underlying pathology which might produce narrowing of the esophagus, such as a carcinoma or a benign stricture, whenever a food-related foreign body becomes impacted in the esophagus. This is an example of a hot dog, which is impacted in the upper esophagus. The red arrow is pointing to the abrupt cutoff in the barium column, and the yellow arrows show the acute angles which are formed around the intraluminal hot dog.
coins in the esophagus will appear round or on face in the frontal projection, whereas those in the trachea appear on end because of the elliptical configurations of the esophagus and the trachea. Children who swallow coins, remember, may also eat other foreign objects, pica, so that it is always important to look for the presence of lead lines in any child who has swallowed a coin. This is an example of a coin in the esophagus just above the level of the aortic arch. On the frontal examination, you can see that the coin is almost round in appearance. That means it's on face, and that means it should be in the esophagus. On the lateral projection, which is here reversed and enhanced so that you can see the coin better, you can see that the coin is seen on end and lies posterior to the trachea. Button batteries pose a potential hazard, unlike ingestion of a coin. Ingested button batteries lodged in the esophagus must be removed at once. If they become impacted in the esophagus, they can produce a focal current. They also produce heat, and they may leak corrosives, any of all of which may produce esophageal perforation. Batteries are removed endoscopically. Once the button battery enters the stomach, it poses a much lower risk. This is an example of a button battery in the stomach. On the frontal projection of the abdomen, it may resemble a coin, but if we look at it in close-up, we can see that the yellow arrow is pointing to a loosened rim, which identifies it as the characteristic appearance of a button battery. Ingested magnets also pose a particular risk, especially when there is an ingestion of multiple small magnets or one magnet and another ferromagnetic piece of metal. Adjacent magnets can adhere to each other and produce bowel necrosis, especially once they get into the small bowel. They can lead to obstruction, including volvulus, perforation or fistula formation, peritonitis, and even death. Plain films are used to establish the number of magnets ingested. If the magnets are in the esophagus, then they are usually removed endoscopically. Once the magnets have passed through the esophagus and are in the small bowel, they are frequently removed surgically before they can produce any of the complications. Aspiration. There are several different types of aspiration. There can be aspiration of pH neutral material, aspiration of undiluted gastric acid, aspiration which leads to the development of pneumonia, which is an infectious process, the first two are not, and aspiration of solid objects. Mendelssohn syndrome is aspiration of a massive amount of gastric contents. It leads to acute respiratory distress frequently in less than an hour. It is produced through a chemical pneumonitis, and there is a high mortality, 25%. This is an example of Mendelssohn syndrome, aspiration of a massive amount of gastric contents. You'll notice that there is diffuse airway disease in both lungs. It has the appearance of non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema. Aspiration of smaller volumes occurs most commonly in the dependent lobe of the lungs. If the patient is supine, which is the most common position for aspiration, then it usually involves the superior segments of the lower lobes or the posterior segment of the upper lobes. If the person is upright, then it usually involves the lower lobes, and because of the orientation and size of the right main bronchus, the right side more often than the left. If the person is prone, as happens with alcoholics, then the aspiration may occur into the right upper lobe. This is an example of aspiration into both lower lobes. The red arrows are pointing to bilateral lower lobe fluffy airspace disease. This is an example of how the aspiration of bland 
gastric contents or water undergoes rapid clearing within a matter of a day or two. This image shows patchy airspace disease at the right lung base on day zero, and then two days later, the right lower lobe is completely clear. This is characteristic of aspiration of either diluted gastric contents or water. Aspiration pneumonia tends to occur most often in those who are elderly, debilitated, or who are immune compromised for one reason or another. It is usually caused by anaerobic organisms like Bacteroides. It frequently goes on to cavitate, and it, unlike the aspiration of bland contents, which clears in a matter of days, frequently takes weeks or months to resolve. This is an example of bilateral lower lobe aspiration pneumonia. This is an infectious process, and the red arrows are pointing to airspace disease at both lung bases with a slight suggestion of cavitation at the left base. Aspiration of solid objects includes the aspiration of teeth. This can occur during a traumatic intubation. The central maxillary incisors are the most at risk. It also can occur, of course, during facial trauma. The tooth can become impacted in the larynx, in the trachea, or most often in a bronchus, and it can lead to pneumonia or obstructive atelectasis secondary to obstruction of the bronchus. Here's an example of a tooth which was aspirated into the left lower lobe bronchus. The red arrow is pointing to the little white density that represents the tooth. This happened to be a child. And here's a CT example of a tooth which was aspirated into the right lower lobe bronchus and its associated pneumonia. The red arrow is pointing to the white object which clearly looks like a tooth, which is obstructing the right lower lobe bronchus and producing the surrounding pneumonia indicated by the white arrow. So here's your mini quiz. Since the topic of this podcast is aspirated or ingested foreign bodies, obviously this represents a foreign body, pause your computer or MP3 player. What kind of foreign body did this 92-year-old male aspirate? Now this is a partial denture or a bridge in the left main bronchus. Here's a lateral view of the same individual, and this is an example of a different partial denture, not the one that was actually aspirated, and it took considerable skill to remove this bronchoscopically with those sharp little prongs sticking out.